when everything else seems lost, we have a surety that God has sent His Son. And through Him, we might be saved. Now, what does that have to do? Jason, can we see that first picture of the beggar, please, of the lame man? There he is. It helps just give us a little idea. They didn't have Med Express. They didn't have St. Francis Hospital. They didn't have women's and children. And this man, as we heard in the reading of God's word this evening, was born from his mother's womb lame. I know that as sure as we're standing here right now, something is going on in Jerusalem. Just like something's going on at my house, and just like something's going on at your house, just like something's going on at somebody else's house. But things are happening. But tonight, if we could just think about this lame man being the lost. We might be able to get something from this message that might help us. Help me. I need help. But it's not within us that these things can happen. I'm afraid that we get too caught up in me. What about me? What can I do? We can't do nothing without him. Nothing. These two men. Now they both had brothers that were in of the original 12, but they're not with them now. I don't find it strange for me and you to get yoked up and I can't get yoked up with my physical brother. I don't find that strange. You see, this is a spiritual thing. This is something that we're going to share throughout eternity. And we find these two men tonight apparently are on a mission. And they see this lame man. Let's call him sinner friend. Let's call him that. How many do we have available to us in the 24 hours of a day that we could reach? Hey, they're, they're just as much as a beggar as this man was. They're just as lame as... As this man was, and it's from the birth of their mother's womb. They need help. Now this is a gut check. Can we help them? We can. With Christ. I would imagine that the man sat there with his head down. Ashamed to look at the people as they went by. It says that he asked alms of them. That means he needed some money. 
I don't know about you, but I ain't got a whole lot of money. But I got a whole lot of Jesus. He couldn't provide for his family. He couldn't even get to the place. The scripture says that they carried him daily. They cared for him. But you know what? They couldn't even help him. They couldn't help him. <laughs> He's powerless. That's the first thing that we would like for us to realize is that this lost and dying world is powerless without Christ. The filthy conversation that we hear. The acts of indiscretion that they commit. The way that they raise their children. We can help them. Will you help somebody? Do you know that if you help somebody, many times you're helping yourself? <laughs> Just makes you feel good when you do the right thing. And you don't have to advertise it. God knows. He knows when you have a need. Even the believer gets their head hung down. Even the believer sometimes is ashamed to say, This man was no different. He was desperate. Jason, can we see what the temple looked like? Do you know that the temple itself was over four football fields long? Four football fields. That's a lot of ground to cover. And they took him and they laid him daily. It's hard to see that. I'm going to turn these lights off real quick right here. Inside of that great wall, and you'll see a gate. That gate, to the best that I could study, and the best that I could research, you see that gate? Can you see it? I, I know it's hard to understand. Or I'm going to be that weatherman again. Right here. That's where they placed him. There was all kinds of gates. And you could go in and out in many places. But on the day that they brought him, this is where they placed him. And I guess it was every day. It's what it says, daily. Thank you, Jason. That's a big place to cover. <laughs> Let's say that's Kanawha City. And the gate is right out here at the front door of this church. Oh, if we could just get him to come. But you see, their minds are corrupted. If we're not careful, our babies in just a matter of days, they don't even want to come to church no more. I'm thankful that my mom and dad brought me to church when I was a child because I never forgot it. And I wonder what this man's mind was like as his parents placed him daily at the gate. 
He was powerless. So were they. And here comes Peter and John. There's just something about that that excites me. Because I know, for example, when Pastor Corey and I go to the hospital, man, there's just something about that. It's like an electricity that you feel as you walk down the halls looking for that one that's in need. You know what they said to him? Look on us. Now here's a hard question. Can you tell your loved one right now? Look on me. What do we show them? What do they see? Actions alone speak louder than words. But what is it that we're showing them? It ought to be okay for us to tell them they're lost because they tell me I'm an idiot, that I'm a lunatic, you know, that you've, that you've lost your mind. And what we need to tell them is, no, we found it. We found it. I was powerless. But now we have that power of Christ in us. And Peter and John, as they walked upon this man, they saw him. They were going to pray, by the way. Now listen, it's a good thing for us to find time to pray. And I know we all know that. And it ain't always available for us to be here at the church. But listen, we need to find a time during the day and often when we can just steal away and pray. If we do that and we see that individual, we'll be ready. Preacher, singer, Musician, doctor, nurse, whatever it is that we do, if we're prayed up, he'll fill us up. And you know what? That'll spill out on somebody else. Look on us, they said. And the Bible says he checked them out. Let's see that second picture, Brother Jason. I want you to notice where, now I know this is a picture, and I know this isn't uh, Peter and John. I get it. But where are their eyes fixed on? One thing that torments me to death is when I'm talking to somebody, and you get this. What would you say? You know, that, that's, that's, that's aggravating, isn't it? You ever go in a doctor's office and the whole time you're trying to tell him why your feet hurt? He's sitting there popping his gum and he's looking at the prescriptions you're on trying to figure out what other drugs he can get you on. And let me tell you something. Be very careful. I'm telling you from my own personal experience. Be very careful what they give you to take. I know that these things are to help us get better. I, I get it. But be very careful what you take. Some of it has serious repercussions that you can't rebound from by yourself. This man was no different. He couldn't move. He couldn't walk. His, he was just aimless. But they 
fixed their eyes on him, and they said, look on us. And he looked at them. It's awful hard to tell somebody you're a Christian when just three minutes ago you told one of the nastiest jokes that could have come out of your mouth. Kind of hard to rebound from that, friend. What did they say? Who sick verse three? Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, Look on us. And then he said, then the scripture says, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He's powerless. Remember, he's powerless. Some of the greatest words Peter spoke were about to read. And Peter wrote some very serious scripture for us to learn from. But oh, if I could just say this to somebody. If you could just say this to somebody. Silver and gold. I ain't got none. But what I do have. Why don't you give it to somebody? It's the greatest gift you could ever give. Now he didn't say, let me go check my bank account. He didn't reach in his pocket and feel around for something that was just going to help this guy for just a minute. He went deep into the source of which he himself had received and said, but such as I have, give I thee. Now, let's pause for just a second. I get it. They got to want help, right? They got to want help. But honey, you can't help them if you ain't got yourself hooked up. There is no way that you can help anybody unless you yourself have received that precious gift of Christ. I mean, you can tell them all you want to tell them about all the different programs that they can get involved in. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he said... Rise up and walk. Now, if he had not said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it would have all been in vain. What do you tell him? Well, my mom said that there's a doctor down there on Smith Street that could look at that. It could be here. It could be a fleshly thing. It could be an inner wound that we can't see. But I'm talking about the lost, the beggar. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, friend, rise up and walk. There is a better way for you to maneuver through this life. I'm back to, I know they got to want help. I get it. But you see, if we're doing all these things like going into that prayer room, and if we're reading our Bible like we should ought to be reading it, and if we're going to church like we should ought to be going, there's a real good chance that when you get an opportunity to witness of the power of Christ in your life, that the menu at Applebee's is not going to be the thing that you try to help them with. You know how I know?
because he helped me. Just like the lost, we too were lost from our mother's womb, and we need help. Have you ever been broken? Have you ever felt that you just can't go on? Have you ever felt like that you just can't even get out of bed? Have you ever felt like that you just can't face another day? Have you ever felt like that if I could just lay down right here, I could die? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk! And they got a hold of him. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. I ain't too proud of this, but when I was a kid, we had hogs. My job to feed them. I had to feed them hogs every morning before I went to school. Feed them when I got home. Feed them before I went to bed. But you know, I got to where I loved them hogs. My dad used to make fun of me because I'd get over in that nasty pig pen and I'd clean up their mess. You got to be willing to do that for the lost. Don't just tell them, show them you love them. And when you reach down, don't let go. Bible says in the next few verses the second thing is this man received power the Bible says in the next few verses that he didn't just get up he got up leaping now think about this he ain't never walked I mean, you wasn't born riding a bicycle. You had training wheels. This man, from broke to no joke, got up and took off running. Power of Christ to redeem. Powerful. Best medicine on the market. And don't say it was necessarily free because he paid the price so that it could be freely given to you and freely given to the next man and woman, child. Now, he didn't let go of them. The Bible says in there, if you'll read on down through there, that he held on to them. Now, he wasn't trying to keep them from going anywhere. And I don't believe the man had any doubt in his mind that he couldn't walk. But he was filled with joy. And where did he go? He went up in the temple with them. And the people started gathering around saying, wait a minute. He's been faking it all these years. He could have said it. I'm afraid that's what we would say. He ain't saved. He's faking it. He continued to leap and jump in so much that it caused a multitude of people to throng upon Peter and John. And they said, wait a minute. We know this guy. What is this great thing that you have done? They didn't take no credit for themselves. The Bible says that he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Verse 9. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Keep on going, brother. 
And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him. Wow! Wow. Keep on going. And as the lame man which was healed, held. He got a hold of something. And he didn't want to let go. We must be very careful with the new converts as they come. If they hold on to you, don't brush them off. Because they too were like the beggar. They were powerless. He held Peter and John and all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus. Now listen to this. Whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Now is the time for the message. What is our message? When someone asks you, what have you been doing? Well, go ahead and break it down real fast and tell them that you're wonderfully and richly blessed. You see, very few newscast people are going to open up a conversation like that. Very few people that you run into just on the street are going to straight up just out of the clear blue say, I'm, wonder- I'm wonderfully and richly blessed beyond measure. I'm sure we do. I'm talking about the world again, just like Jerusalem was. They were lost. Our message should be, Verse 14. But ye denied the Holy One. We've met Him. That's not an everyday conversation that we hear people say. For the past 20 years, I've been walking and talking with Jesus. Now, that will separate the wheat from the tares real quick. They may not leave, but it will help the conversation as you begin to witness unto them the change that took place since the last time they saw you. They desired and a murderer to be granted unto them, and they killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead, wherefore them two boys was witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Do you know what they said? I'm just, I mean, I'm just imagining what people say today. How can this be? <laughs> How can this be? Chris, the last time I saw you, we was being over a table, busted an eight ball out, and we did it all until we left. What do you mean you've changed? How can this be? It's because I've been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and I've now been established in my goings, and wherever I go, I want to take Jesus with me. What do we say when they ask us, how can this be? I really can't explain it. But I can tell you that a change has been made. And until the church today, as a body, I'm talking about all of the churches, 
until we start telling this old story again, this world is going to continue to fall right into the, hey, it's a, in a handbasket going to hell because we're not telling this story of how it can be. Drug addict, alcoholic, be a doctor or a lawyer. Sin is no, I mean, sin is sin. And until we can share that power that we have through Christ, this world is not going to change. We know that it's going to come to an end. But while we have breath, while we can still teach our children. And honey, I'm going to tell you something. I feel sorry for you all today. I do. It's a cruel world. How can it be? So when we leave here tonight, it don't have to be a guy living under the bridge. It could be your doctor. It could be your boss. It could be your mother, your brother, or your sister. But we need to let them see that change that took place in our life and take no credit for ourselves. But we've been redeemed. This man received salvation from the simple act of faith of two other men that just simply said, look on us. Can we say that tomorrow? Can we start practicing that tomorrow? All it takes is for someone to say, you know, my brother, him and his wife's going through a bitter divorce. Try to say this. Where do they go to church? Now we know that divorce takes place. It's ugly. We know this. But you see that started the conversation. And then we can begin to tell them. That through Christ. All of these things are possible. He had no power. He received power. His testimony was leaping, running, jumping, and praising God. How can this be? I don't know where we're at tonight. I know that we're early into this new year. And we're going to do something just a little different tonight. I'm going to have Alex sing a song. Is there any way that we could stand and that we could praise God just one more time? Is there any way that as she sings, that if you could just find it somewhere in your body. Because we're among brothers and sisters. Is there any chance that we might be able to praise him this evening? You can go right ahead. I'm going to talk while she's singing. So just don't know how this is going to turn out. 